going to find out about a Muslim that was raised from the dead in the morgue. Guess what he believes about Jesus now? Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Uh, I'm, I'm with a very interesting person. His ancestor was the best friend of Muhammad, and he was the first caliph of the entire Muslim world. Is that right, Nasser Siddiqui? That is absolutely right, Sid. That, that's quite a genealogy that you have. Yes. yes, that's why the name Siddiq is synonymous with Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first caliph of the uh, Muslim nation. So, out of curiosity, would most Muslims recognize your last name? Absolutely, absolutely. If I was to go to the Middle East, they would immediately recognize Nasser Siddiq. He's family from the Siddiqs. And uh, speaking of family, he came from a very prosperous family, but uh, he didn't do so bad himself. By 35, he was a millionaire. He had all the neatest cars and homes and everything Hollywood says they'll make you happy. But you know what? He developed a deadly disease. Tell me about that, Nasser. Um, I got very sick and it started off with blisters on the side of my neck and by the morning it had grown to blisters half in inches half inch in size on the side of my this head. isn't supposed to happen to you everything mm, no but of course you were working about 18 hours 18 a day, hours a and day. You, so your immune system was with yes down, down, <laughs> minus zero they they rushed me to hospital i had passed out twice that night they rushed me to hospital, uh, Toronto General Hospital in Toronto, Canada, in the emergency section. They diagnosed it as the worst case of shingles ever recorded in the history. I was in so But much wait a pain. second, I had shingles and I was in pain, but that wasn't, I, I couldn't die from it. <laughs> well, this one was from the top of my head all the way down here, all the way down the side of my face, this ear, this neck, this shoulder. Uh, they admitted me to hospital. The next morning, this ear was touching this shoulder. It was like a balloon. I looked like a leper, deformed on this side. And my immune system was not fighting back. Now, do you, you have a picture of that. Would yes, you show yes, us that? Yes, absolutely. This is what I look like uh, in that hospital room. Mm. Blisters one inch in size, chicken pox, temperature 107.6, and brain damage. In this condition, with hypothermia, they left me to die. Well, the doctors actually came into the hospital, yes. standing over your bed. Yes. They think you're out of it, you're sleeping. Yes. What did you hear them say? They examined me and they said that his immune system has shut down. This is spreading across his body. Uh, we can't do anything about the hypothermia because the brain had cooked itself and they said I would probably be dead by the morning. In fact, Anita, they took her out of the room afterwards and explained to her that A, if I lived, this, this is, I would this, be this blind. This is someone that worked with you. Yes, I, my eye would be blind, my ear deaf, th there's brain damage, this side of the face would be paralyzed, and if I lived, I would be a vegetable, but probably I would be dead by the morning. Okay, you hear this horrible report. Yes. Uh, you're a Muslim. Yes. Uh, did you prepare? What, what does a Muslim think when he gets a death sentence? Like um, the, Allah is not a healer. Uh, Mohammed is not a healer. So we don't turn to Allah to heal us. We assume that we're going to die. But I was afraid of death, Sid. I was petrified of Why? death. Why? I didn't know what was on the other side, but right. I was afraid of it. And the very people that I had my faith in, my trust in, were those doctors. And they had just given up. What do you do when the people you got your trust in have given up on you and left you to die? In, in, in fear, I cried out. I said, God, if you're real, don't let me die. That's what I cried out. 
Mohammed didn't come, Allah didn't come, but that night, that night, in that room, there appeared a figure at the end of the bed. And this person... Well, had, wait a second. Had you ever seen something supernatural like this before in your no, entire life? Never. This is the, your first time... Yes. Okay. Now, now there's this figure. Yes. And uh, are you scared? Are you, what's going on? No, with it? no, this? not at all. I okay. wasn't scared at all. I, in the middle of the night, I see this figure at the end of the bed, and it was the outline of a person with light radiating from them. Hmm. I couldn't tell you the way the face looked, but all I could see was this outline of a person with light. Now, I knew it was Jesus. These people come to me and they say, but you're a Muslim. Muslims don't know Jesus. Oh, yes, they do. If you read the Quran, Jesus is mentioned many times as a good man, as a healer, as a prophet. Even his birth is mentioned and that he healed people. But, but the main thing I understand about Islam, uh, they say God has no son. That's I mean, exactly look at the mosque right. when they, they have it right on top in, in Jerusalem. <laughs> That's right. He has no son. Well, this person that appeared said two things. I'm the God of the Christians, mm -hmm. and I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wait a second. As a Muslim, isn't it uh, Abraham, Ishmael, Ishmael and Jacob? Right. That's right. <laughs> Ishmael was supposed to be the firstborn, right. not Isaac, but that's not what this person said. Abraham, Isaac. So to me, it meant a whole lot. But even more astounding was that the next morning, the same doctors walked in and they said, we don't understand what's happened. It is a miracle. It has gone into remission. Instead of spreading, they are starting to decrease. Now, when they said that to you, what did you think? I, I, I said, look, I don't know what to tell you, but there was a person. Did you a tell person. them? You I told, told them. them. Oh, they're going to put you in a mental ward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told them there was Jesus here and he healed me. And a said, Muslim no, no. saying that, they're going to put him away. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe me. And that became a test case in the city of Toronto. Why is this man alive? In fact, they said it's gone into remission so much, you can go home now. And I said, no, I don't want to go home. That was my security. That little room was my security. You wanted that man to come back? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> they released me the next day. Now, the problem was that even though it had gone into remission, th my head still looked deformed. Right. And so when I would walk down the street, people would cross over the other side. They didn't know what was wrong with me. But what, I, what did you do with this man saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, Isaac. <laughs> I know. Yes, sir. I, I, it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, um, is this Jesus that appeared in my room, is he a prophet the way the Muslims had taught me all my life? Or is he the son of God? Hold the way that the thought. Let's find claim. out how God supernaturally shows Nassar that he's the son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't go away. This is amazing. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Get ready to reserve your place on the Sid and Joyce Roth Appointment in Jerusalem Israel Tour. We've purposely kept this top quality tour under $3,000, and that includes all taxes and tips. Don't miss out on going with Sid Roth on this Israel tour for this special low price. Call now for the free brochure at 1-800-959-1062. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel trip when you call or visit our website at sidroth.org. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Nasser Siddiqui, and Nasser is a, is a Muslim. Uh, he is literally dying, the worst case of shingles the hospital had ever seen. Uh, and a man comes in, he just intuitively knows that it's Jesus, and he's emanating such love, such light, uh, that healing begins to start in Nasser's body. The doctors don't understand it. They release him. He wasn't completely healed, but he, he, he went from no hope to being able to leave the hospital. But he had a problem because this man that visited him, Jesus, said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if he knew one, one thing, he knew God has no son. But 
<laughs> That's what he said. Exactly so what, what did said. you do about that? I had that burning question. Is Jesus really the Son of God? And um, I got home that day, the day I, I was released from the hospital. The next morning I wake up at 6 o'clock. I don't know why I woke up at 6, turned on the television. There were two men just like here talking about that very question. And on the screen it says, Is Jesus the Son of God? My goodness. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. That was the very question that was in my heart. And they're talking back and forth. And they were talking about how God sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins because of his love for us. This now, as a Muslim, what, is the, what did this mean to you? It's so strange. Well, well, as a Muslim, I was taught all my life that uh, to know that you're going to heaven, your good works have to exceed your bad works. And it's only through works. The only exception of that in Islam is called jihad. Jihad is when you die for your cause. You die for your God. And here I'm hearing these two men talk about not dying dying for your God, but your God dying for you. I'd never experienced that kind of love in my life. And I said, could this be true? Could it be true that God, the Father, sent Jesus, the Son, to pay the price for my sins, for everything that I've done wrong? This was, this was all new to me, but it was exciting. And these men were talking back and forth that yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and yes, it is documented that He walked the earth, and it is documented that He healed, and it is documented that He died on the cross and paid the price for the sins of all men. So what happened with this horrific disease that you had? Well, that day when that program finished, I got on my knees. They led me in a prayer. I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I found a photograph of the way I used to look, and I started praying to this Jesus. Can you make me look like this again? I had looked 75 years old. I had my whole face is aged. Five days later, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. The doctor said, don't scratch the blisters, they're contagious. But I saw some on my pillow, so I must have scratched them in the middle of the night. I got out of bed, stood under the shower, said for an hour and a half, every single blister from the top of my head, my face, my ear, my neck, my shoulder, fell. And the skin was red like raw meat. And the doctor said I would have white blotches. But as you can see, no. there's no blotches. So is there any doubt in your mind that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that Jesus is his son. Any doubt? No doubt. I, no I'll ever. tell you. I have I, living proof. I, I'm sure of that. So Nasser ends up storybook. He marries his associate, Anita. They go on a month wedding. They've got all of this money, and then there's a downturn in the economy. They, they, they go to, to all the way down. They're out of money. And then his wife is expecting, and she develops a life-threatening disease. And NASA thinks she's going to die. However, he's been reading the Bible all of this time, and he gets all sorts of tapes on healing, and he plays them 24-7 for Anita. What happened to her briefly? She collapsed outside of a mall. Then she had six catatonic seizures a day. They took her to St. Michael's Hospital, put 28 needles in her head, diagnosed multiple sclerosis, said that she would be a cripple, gave me a catheter and a wheelchair, said, you take her home. There's nothing we can do. There's hmm. no cure. She's going to lose the rest of her organs. I knew one scripture really well. What's Faith it? comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When the world has given up, you better turn to Jesus. And so I got as many tapes as I could on healing scriptures, mm -hmm. scriptures that teach on healing, and I played them by her bedside 24 hours a day. Before I did that, Sid, I took all my friends, all my relatives, all my neighbors that didn't believe like me, kicked them out of the house. She did really? not need sympathy. She did not need chocolates. She did not need flowers. She needed the Word of God 24-7 for two straight years. And, and you're getting to it too. Yes, it's both going of us listening you. to the Word 24-7. The Word is getting in because faith doesn't come by any other way but by hearing. So she heard the Word, heard the Word, heard the Word, built up her faith that, wait a minute, 2,000 years ago, Jesus carried every sickness and every disease, including multiple sclerosis. And if He carried it, why is she carrying it now? 
She had to get that revelation. And when that word exploded on the inside of her, now we started to see her getting better and better. Did it explode in you too at Absolutely. Point? You knew for sure she'd be healed? I knew for sure that if anything could heal her, it would be the word of God. Okay, so she gets healed and Nasser comes back and everything is doing wonderful again and the disease tries to come back. Uh, don't go away. What happens when a, a disease that's going to kill you, you're healed and you're excited, excited and you rejoice and everyone is happy and everything is coming back, everything is wonderful, and then the disease. What, what was the name of the disease? Multiple sclerosis for Anita and shingles for me. They, they both came back? They both came back. On you? Let's find out. Don't go away. <laughs> we'll be right back, too. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Nasser Siddiqui and his wife Anita received major healings in their life, and God has given them supernatural proven principles that will do the same for you. Get ready to receive your healing and keep it. Call now and receive Nasser Siddiqui's revelatory six-part audio CD teaching series, How to Receive and Keep Your Healing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1411. Through this supernatural course, you will learn how to overcome the attacks of Satan, Understand the difference between a symptom and a sickness. Find out how your actions activate the healing anointing. Learn ways to finally receive your healing. We've had incredible testimonies. People that are sick can now realize that they can be healed, completely healed, totally restored, and then <laughs> learn how to keep it, how to stay healed. You can walk in health now. Sid says this is the clearest teaching to help you understand how to receive and keep your healing. Don't miss out on getting Nasser Siddiqui's revelatory six-part audio CD teaching series, How to Receive and Keep Your Healing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1411. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1411 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Nasser Siddiqui. And what happens if your brother, who is an ardent Muslim coming from a very high Muslim family, same last name, Siddiqui, that most Muslims are familiar with, the first caliph uh, of, uh, uh, of all of Islam, had that last name, and that was one of his ancestors. What happens when you're healed of MS? You're healed of life-threatening shingles, and both come back, the MS to his wife, the shingles to Nasser. What do you do? Do you say, I guess it didn't work. I don't know. What do you do? That would have been the normal reaction. Right. But the difference was that with Anita, she listened to the Word for two straight years, and I listened with her to the Word for two straight years. And when you have that much Word in you, you realize that Jesus carried every sickness and every disease. So when, those, when that, that tingling feeling started to come back on me with shingles, I realized immediately, wait a minute, is this shingles coming back or is this a tingling feeling? And the response was, it was a tingling feeling. It was a symptom. The same thing with my wife. Uh, and I want you to get this very, very clear. There is a difference between a symptom and a sickness. Yes. And if you don't understand this, the devil can take advantage of you. So explain this. Well, uh, with her, the same thing happened. The symptoms of MS tried to come back. The doctors told me that shingles will be in my body for the rest of my life, mm. and the little bit of stress, and it'll erupt again. Well, I've had 10 times more stress, and it's never been able to erupt because I've been able to deal with the symptom. Same with MS. She said that, she, oh yes, she's okay now, but MS will be in her body for the rest of her life. Well, no, that symptoms have come back. But we've been able to identify the difference between a symptom and a sickness. The average Christian, what happened? 
happens is that the symptom comes back and immediately their response is, well, I didn't get healed or I got healed and I lost it. Now, I remember many years ago, uh, a young Jewish believer came to me and he didn't need his glasses anymore. And he prayed and his eyes were normal. Hallelujah. The next day, yes. he needed his glasses. He said, Sid, what happened? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> Today I know, but at that time I said, I don't know. So what did you do when the symptom came back to yourself? The first we had to identify it was a symptom. Second, we had to deal with it, with the name of Jesus and the authority that has been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. And using the name and using the authority, we started to rebuke the symptom and not open our mouth and acknowledge the sickness. Because the moment you open your mouth and acknowledge the sickness, you open the door for it to come back. And so we said, no, we're not going there. This is a symptom, and we're going to deal with it as a symptom. Sometimes people get a headache, and they think, well, my sickness is a headache. Usually it isn't. The headache is a result of something else that is going on, and they never deal with the root. Well, we had already dealt with the root, which was the sickness. We're not going to deal with that again. Jesus carried that one. Now we're going to deal with the symptom. And every time a symptom came, we were able to take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Number one. Number two, we were able to use the authority of the believer that Jesus gave us and the name that is above every name and rebuke every symptom. You know, that is so wonderful. I wish everyone understood this. But what happens when your brother, who you love, who is a Muslim, dies and is in the morgue in another country? Yes. What happened to you? Yes. My brother was... Um, he died in a Westminster Hospital in London, England. They took his body to the morgue. I got the phone call. My wife and I, we started praying because we know where he's going. We know exactly where he's going. And we started praying, praying, praying. And after several hours of prayer, I got the call that he came back to life in the morgue. I wonder what they thought. I mean, that's got to be. Can Body you picture that scene? <laughs> I, I mean, I can picture it. <laughs> and they brought him back to the uh, intensive care unit, and I flew to England, prayed, and laid hands on him, and he came out of the coma, gave his life to Jesus, and described what he saw. Heaven is real, but said, hell is real. What, what did he see? He saw himself looking down on his body and he saw the doctors trying to re revive his heart because his heart had stopped beating. Then they, he saw them give up and put, cover him with a sheet. They, he saw them looking down. They took his body into an elevator down to the basement to the morgue. Then he found himself falling in a very dark place. And there were uh, creatures there, ugly creatures. He was hard to describe because he was frightened with them. And then finally, as he was falling in this dark hole, he looked up and he saw a crucifix. And he, this is what he described to me. I said, you saw Jesus on the cross? He said, no, no, I saw myself on the cross. I said, what? What? He said, it was the most horrific thing I'd ever seen in my life. I don't ever want to see that again. I said, you deserve to be on the cross because the wages of sin are death unless you accept that Jesus went to the cross for your sins and he gave his life to Christ. Now, what did he think when he saw these creatures in this pit? He was petrified. He was absolutely petrified, terrified. He was full of fear. He didn't even want to talk about it, Sid. And when he talked about it, his eyes just grew big, and it was like, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about this. Hell is real. Now, I love the freshness you have when you teach about healing. Amen. Answer this question. Yes. I pray for many people. I put my hands on them. I feel the presence of God going out of me into them, and I say, you are healed. And a few weeks later, they come back and they say, I'm not healed. What happened? It yes. went into them. I know it went into them. Yes. There's several issues that could stop it. Number one, anointing can be on you, and you can still say sick if you don't believe that the anointing is on you. Many times we pray for people in healing lines and they don't fall down. Well, they say, well, I didn't fall, so I didn't get it. Or I didn't feel and I didn't get it. There's no record that anybody felt anything. Even the woman with the issue of blood only felt the blood dry up. Doesn't say she felt the anointing. Jesus felt the anointing go out, but doesn't say she felt the anointing. So they didn't feel anything. Or here's the most common one. They 
came with a sickness and it was still on them when they left. And so they say, I didn't get it. No, no. Some people were healed instantly in the Bible, but some people were healed as they walked. Some people were healed within the hour. So there is progressive healings and there's instant healings. Mine was instant. My wife took two years. It didn't matter whether it was instant or progressive. She's healed. And so you can have the healing anointing in you, which is what you did when you laid hands on them, and they didn't acknowledge that the anointing was in them and they were being healed. Uh, you know, Nasser said something very important. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or Come not. On. His brother saw hell. He was, saw this pit, these horrible monsters, and he made Jesus his Messiah. If this Muslim with such a substantial background could believe in Jesus, you could do that right now. If you will believe that Jesus died for your sins, every bad thing you've ever done, he died for. And tell him you're sorry for the bad things you've done. It's washed away, and you ask Jesus to come and live inside of you and be Lord of your life. If you'll do that now, you will know that you're going to heaven. You won't hope. You won't think, you will know. Knowing is much better than where you are. Nasser Siddiqui and his wife Anita received major healings in their life, and God has given them supernatural proven principles that will do the same for you. Get ready to receive your healing and keep it. Call now and receive Nasser Siddiqui's revelatory six-part audio CD teaching series, How to Receive and Keep Your Healing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1411. Through this supernatural course, you will learn how to overcome the attacks of Satan, Understand the difference between a symptom and a sickness. Find out how your actions activate the healing anointing. Learn ways to finally receive your healing. We've had incredible testimonies. People that are sick can now realize that they can be healed, completely healed, totally restored, and then <laughs> learn how to keep it, how to stay healed. You can walk in health now. Sid says this is the clearest teaching to help you understand how to receive and keep your healing. Don't miss out on getting Nasser Siddiqui's revelatory six-part audio CD teaching series, How to Receive and Keep Your Healing, yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1411. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1411 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. In 2005, Chuck Pierce prophesied that an African-American man would be in the White House. Wait till you hear what he says will happen shortly in America.